We're looking inside the Merc today. I'm probably going to just uh, start it up. Just a reminder on my little start procedure here. If I look down, uh, the, fuel, the, uh, the glass bowl looks pretty full, but I, I know it won't be. I know it won't be right up to the top. So I did do a video a long while back about uh, this. So I can give this some pumps. And I can see it bubbling into the uh, glass bowl. And once that looks like it's pretty much jammer full. There we go. And I'll know that that's full right up. And I'll go over to the other side. You probably won't be able to see it. I'll give her a couple of big shots of the throttle there. And hopefully there's enough juice in the battery to um, spin this boy. Set you up inside the car. Let's have a look. It smells a little musty in here, but it's a good musty. It's an old, old car musty. Um, but as I think I've mentioned before, there's some known leaks, um, in particular around the antenna area. It kind of follows through and, and leaks down onto the carpet. So. I am kind of surprised there's not a mushroom somewhere. So, got to either find the leaks or cover the car better. And once we get the garage up, that won't be as much of a problem. saw there that took less time than the um, Studebaker did doing the same thing although I was pretty uh, impressed with that too it's pretty quick this time but I, I still think uh, I still think that was quicker and also with an old six volt system and whatnot uh, I mean the battery has been sitting there plugged in for probably five months or so four months maybe So, I mean, that is the beauty of a flathead, you know, it's the thing is so damn simple, there's, uh, you know, half as many parts on there as there is any, anything else in the fleet here. I'd love to go out for a spin, in fact, maybe that's not totally impossible. I'm in the middle of fixing Kara's uh, Husqvarna tractor. It's kind of in the way right now, and I will be doing a movie about that as well. Sixty psi oil pressure, which is pretty awesome. Starting to register a little bit of fuel. Uh, the fuel gauge is not entirely accurate, but um, I know it's got some because I had overfilled it that time and it was kind of bleeding over. So I know there's still there still is plenty of fuel. temperature gauge is already climbing uh, really fast. That's something that always concerns me, but I, I remember last year when we were doing all the infrared timings or infrared temperatures and all that, uh, that this gauge always shows super hot no matter what, so this hasn't been running long enough to be as hot as it's indicating there essentially. It's a pretty bitchin', uh, this engine's really happy, it seems to be happy, you know. And I like that because it means I don't have to <coughs> do a million, million things to it. There's always some things in the back of my mind I'd like to do. 
so we'll just tackle them over time but uh, did some of the major shit there the water system and all that it could probably use water pumps uh, but the pump on the passenger side is part of the engine mount so you kind of have to get a jack under there and lift the engine up a bit to get it off the water pump a little strange there's two water pumps of course because there's two different sides of the to the system I don't know that they both are definitely the one on the passenger side it, it you can see it bolt to the frame so the other one looks like it's clear but anyway I have to say that was uh, totally effortless was looking good uh, after the one um, wash that Karen and I gave it but of course now the um, trees are giving out their uh, pollen and uh, fucked it up again. So you can see that's a reasonable little smooth idle there. That's probably around 450 rpm maybe. Anyway, that's it for the, uh, basically the first start. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll talk soon.